thank you very much. <clears throat> and before I get to my closing comments, let me just address a few of the things that were, were mentioned here related to a woman's body um, that we're not talking about facts or medical science. So the problem with the argument about the woman's body is that there are two bodies involved. There are two souls and there are two human beings. So let's talk about science for just a moment. <clears throat> Consider the fact that a child has a unique DNA code from the moment of conception. Consider these quotes from scientists and from embryologists. Quote, in that fraction of a second when the chromosome forms, when the chromosomes form pairs, the sex of the new child will be determined. Hereditary characteristics received from each parent will be set and a new life will have begun. Kaluger G and Kaluger M in human development, the span of life. Here's another one, science. Quote, it should always be remembered that many organs are still not completely developed by full term, and birth should be regarded only as an incident in the whole developmental process. F. Beck, Human Embryology, Blackwell Scientific Publications, 1985. Here's another one, science. Although it is customary to divide human development into prenatal and postnatal periods, it is important to realize that birth is merely a dramatic event during development resulting in a change in environment." Unquote. The Developing Human Clinically Oriented Embryology, 5th edition, Mora and Prusad. Here's another one. Landrum B. Shettles, MD, PhD, was the first scientist to succeed at in vitro fertilization. This scientist said, quote, the zygote is human life. There is one fact that no one can deny. Human beings begin at conception, unquote. I could go on and on with quotes from human embryologists. Republicans are often accused of denying science when it comes to cli uh, climate change. Unfortunately, the same could be said of those uh, making this argument. The science is clear. Life begins at conception. When we talk about denying women's health care, what about the health care of the unborn child whose heartbeat is forever stopped? The voice that will forever be silenced. What about that health care? So I believe that the people of Iowa and not unelected judges of the Iowa Supreme Court should decide how Iowa regulates abortion. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch in a rare interview recently given made the following statement, quote, folks who disagree with originalism sometimes call themselves living constitutionalists. Well, who wants a dead constitution? I don't. I want an enduring constitution. And the idea of originalism is just simply that judges should follow the original meaning of the words on the page and neither add things that aren't there nor take away things that are there. And I worry that both of these things happen when we depart from the original meaning of the Constitution, unquote. Justice Gorsuch then pointed to the Dred Scott decision as an example, and he said, quote, the first time the Supreme Court really departed from the original meaning of the Constitution was perhaps in Dred Scott, when the court found a right for white persons to own black persons as slaves in the territories of the United States. Unquote. He then went on to say, scour the document as long as you want. You will not find that right there. They made it up, unquote. So contrast this perspective with the reasoning of the Iowa Supreme Court. When the Iowa Supreme Court struck down our 72-hour waiting period, the majority opinion stated that we had, quote, freed ourselves from the private views of the Constitution's founders, unquote. The opinion went on to state that the Constitution should be instead be interpreted by, quote, the current prevailing standards that mark the progress of a maturing society. The judicial reasoning stated in this ruling, creating a fundamental right to abortion when none actually existed in the Iowa Constitution, is the exact opposite of the reasoning stated by Justice Gorsuch and how the courts should read and decide cases. And it goes right to the heart of his fears of what might happen to our Constitution if things are added or taken away from the words that are actually in the Constitution. And I share this concern. I believe the people of Iowa and not unelected judges of the Iowa Supreme Court should decide how Iowa regulates abortion. The implications of this ruling go far beyond abortion. 
This ruling challenges the very way our republic functions. It challenges the legislature's constitutional role in government to make laws. If the Iowa Supreme Court is the final arbiter in determining what should be added to the Constitution, as well as what laws should be struck down, that we, the elected representatives, have passed, and they base these rulings not on what is written in the Constitution, but instead upon their unique view of what constitutes the current prevailing standards of our society, then those of us serving in the House of Senate should simply take our pens and papers and head on home. The legislature makes laws, the courts interpret those laws, but not under the philosophy expressed in the ruling that struck down our 72-hour waiting period. This is the first reason that I believe we need the Life Amendment, to respond to the challenge to legislative authority that is expressed by the majority opinion that struck down our 72-hour waiting period and ultimately led to a lower court striking down our heartbeat protections. I believe the people of Iowa through their elected representatives and not unelected judges of the Iowa Supreme Court should decide how Iowa regulates abortion. The second reason we must have the Life Amendment is that without it, contrary in my opinion to what has been said here, we are likely on the way to late term and taxpayer funded abortion in Iowa. The ruling striking down our 72 hour waiting period which led to a lower court ruling already striking down our heartbeat protections created a fundamental right to abortion in the Iowa Constitution subject to strict scrutiny. Under this ruling and its application, none of our protections are likely to stand against court challenges. Our 20 week ban on abortions, our laws preventing taxpayer funded abortion could all succumb to this ruling based upon the strict scrutiny standard that now exists in our state constitution, not the federal. And again, uh, we were quick to dismiss two Supreme Court justices, Mansfield and Waterman, in their minority opinion when they stated, quote, I wonder if the majority is laying groundwork instead perhaps a stepping stone toward a ruling that Iowa's Medicaid program must fund abortions. I don't think this is fear mongering as has been suggested, but rather the measured opinion of two Iowa Supreme Court justices in that minority opinion. This proposed amendment would not stop one abortion in Iowa, contrary to false news and talking points being made by some. It would put the Iowa Constitution right back where it was prior to the ruling that created a fundamental right to abortion in the Iowa Constitution. The right to abortion will rest where it always has in Iowa with federal rulings and federal law. So we need this amendment because the people of Iowa and not unelected judges of the Iowa Supreme Court should decide how Iowa regulates abortion. We need this amendment because without it we could see taxpayer and late term abortion in Iowa. Most Iowans instinctively know that what is growing in the mother's womb is a baby. But now a handful of unelected judges have created a precedent in Iowa that could lead to making it legal to kill a baby up until birth and make Iowans pay for it. We need the Life Amendment to allow the people of Iowa, not extremist judges, to determine reasonable abortion regulations that actually protect both women and children. Again, the amendment reads, to defend the dignity of all human life and to protect mothers and unborn children from efforts to expand abortion even to the day of birth. We, the people of the state of Iowa, declare that this Constitution shall not be construed to recognize, grant, or secure a right to abortion or to require the public funding of abortion. Mr. Chair, I move the bill.